Good morning. And how are you? Good. Tomorrow is Labor Day, and um, I, am very, I am very excited that I am not going to be in class tomorrow. <laughs> but I, I understand that um, uh, the lower grade of school, as in school kids, you will be getting ready to go to school because the summer vacation is, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's over now. So it will be every morning, get up early and go to school. So this is really like a new phase during this year. A new school year is beginning. And I guess it's not fun for you because I know as students, <laughs> you would like to sleep in, you wouldn't want to go to school, but come on, we must go to school. But I am happy that I don't have school tomorrow. Yeah, and um, if you look at the bulletin, you'll also discover that a lot of par parish activities, you know, will kick start, you know, um, right after the Labor Day um, um, uh, holiday. And I have been pre-informed that someone is going to speak to us about you know some activities in the parish you know and you recall that at the beginning of this year father j the parish council and the administrators of the parish had actually you know prayed together with us and asked us to think about um, ourselves as disciples of jesus during the course of this year and very importantly, the gospel and the readings of today really speak to what it means to be disciples of Jesus. In fact, you can, you can call it, you know, Jesus pushing, you know, pushing it down to us, flashing it before us, letting us see the cost of discipleship, what it truly means to be a disciple. I'm sure the person who's going to speak to us, you know, will tell us bits about how we are going to live, you know, continue to live, especially during the course of this year, especially from now on. But very important that we, you know, think with Jesus what Jesus is presenting to us, what it means to be a disciple. Within the context of today's gospel reading, what does Jesus say to us about discipleship? What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? So that when we take it upon ourselves and say that this year we are reflecting on our discipleship as members of St. Simon and Jude family, what does it mean and what do we mean? What are we supposed to be doing? It is something to do. And we are going to hear more about that. But very importantly, Jesus is speaking to us. And I would like us to open our hearts and let these words remain. That if you choose to be a disciple of Jesus, I, I want to change it to to, to the first person and speak to myself so you can speak to yourself or let, this, let these words come to you or personalize it. I must deny myself and take up my cross and follow him. I must deny myself I must take up my cross and I must follow Jesus. What is cross? Are you seeing the cross? Someone is hanging there on the cross. That guy there carried his cross all the way, walked the stations, and got to Golgotha, and hangs on the cross. Because of some crimes he committed? Absolutely no. No. 
But for who? For himself? No. For who? For the rest of us. He was not doing any service to himself. He was doing service to the rest of us. Are we ready to take up our own crosses and follow Jesus? Even in some sort of humiliations we might take as Christians? And we just simply say, wow, I can only take this and endure this because I love Jesus. If I were to act with you, and come against you like every other man or woman in this world today, I will give it to you. But because of Jesus I follow, I take this humiliation. And that is what St. Paul tells us in the second reading, that we must quit the ways of the world and be ready to do what? To follow the ways of God. Learning what the will of God is, what is good, what is pleasing to God, and what is perfect. To carry our cross and follow Jesus is not without suffering. I know many people in this parish are suffering. I know that many people are suffering, different types of suffering, some due to illness. Sometimes we even bear the burdens of the illness of our beloved ones, either your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife. Some of us share in the sufferings of our loved ones those who are sick. And you do that with love. That is, that is the greatest, that is the greatest, you know, um, uh, conviction of being a Christian who carries your cross, that you are doing that with love. You are not begrudging. You are not sad. You are not sorrowful. You are not cursing God. Some people curse God because they are sick or because of their sick relatives. You curse God. But even more than just suffering humiliation and, and, and then suffering from sickness or any other thing that you might be suffering from in this world, Jesus demands that even if it takes us to sacrifice in our lives, that that is still part of our call to discipleship. We are called to die to the self. The self, ego, Ourselves are actually, or is actually one of the greatest dangers to our living our faith. The I and the me, and the me alone, and I, what I want, these are the things that put us into trouble with living the life of discipleship. How ready we should be to think less of ourselves and think more of what God wants us to do. Do you know that when I read, you know, uh, the gospel, sorry, the first reading, the first word that greeted me shook me. And I'll tell you why it shook me. Those first words of the prophet Jeremiah, you know what he said? What did Jeremiah say? You duped me. You duped me. <laughs> and you know why it was funny? Because 
One of my friends in this parish, Judy, had told me that, Father Jerome, did you see Father Tom Coons on television? Did you read of him on the papers, uh, one of the papers, the local papers of Pittsburgh, you know, told the story of two parishes that had issues and uh, what were the issues? And I read those things, but I just slipped that uh, newspaper, you know, on my, uh, under my door and asked me to read it. And I read it. And the words that I underlined was what were used to, to decorate negatively Bishop Zubik. He duped us. That's what I said. But the people did not allow themselves to be duped. <laughs> Jeremiah allowed himself to be duped by the Lord. You and I must allow ourselves to be duped, although not by anybody, but by the Lord. Jeremiah becomes a sign for us. For the people of those parishes who have become so angry, Father Tom was the one who did it very beautifully when he said that these are loving and faithful God's children. And I love that which Father Tom said. Because Father Tom believes, and I, told, I said to him in the rectory when I read that article, you know, what he said, I said to him, look, I love what you did. Whereas every other person would be so angry with these parishioners and feel that these are God-forsaken people, but you said that these people are good people, faithful Catholics, and thumbs up for you. Because what the parish priests of these parishioners will be thinking will be that God forsake these people. I don't, want any, I don't want anything to do with this kind of people. How could they do a thing like this, a horrible thing like this? But see what you said. What you said was like God's open arms to welcome and gather everyone together. I'm just thinking about what Bishop, Bishop Jusuvik is going to be thinking about himself. I probably think he'll be thinking of himself as Jeremiah, one prophet that the people that he is trying to work for and serve are the ones who are trying to even destroy his image. I'm thinking, he could be thinking that way, but if I were to meet with Bishop Jusuvik, I'll tell him, no, not that way. Tom has set the pace. Tom says, these people are good, loving, and faithful Catholics, Christians. And these are the kind of words that show that these leaders of our church are men and women of character. My dear brothers and sisters, temptations, tribulations, humiliations, sufferings, you know, these are all part of our life and of our calling. We pray that the grace of Jesus who calls us into this job but you on the pews and all of us to be journeying together that we will understand that in spite of all these, God stands with us. Not with one group against the other, but that God stands with all of us for us. Think about Peter. Last Sunday, G Peter could be eulogized. Peter was spoken of. Oh, Oh, God has ministered to you. The spirit of the Father has said this to you. And you are so open to the spirit of the Father. See what you said. That Jesus is the Christ. Peter could be eulogized. We could say beautiful and love, lovely things about him. But just today, Jesus calls him Satan. You and I, we are all on a journey. God bless us and help us keep focused. We are all called to be disciples of Jesus. The bishop, the priest, all the clergy, the hierarchs, and even all of you, priests of God at your own level, we are all called to be on a journey as disciples of Jesus, seeking to do the will of God. Rory, come and tell us a little bit more about what we got to be doing. And I give you just half a minute to do that. Where are you? I'm over here, Father Drew. Okay, come on. I'm going to sit here for a minute. And the reason for that is you're looking for me and you see the guy with the microphone. But if I wouldn't be holding this microphone, would you know where I am Stand and who up. I am? Right? <laughs> so the point of that. Come on. The point of that All right. is that 
you may not know your neighbors over here on this side of the church because you always sit in the 19th pew, right? So I just want to use that as an illusion here for, to talk a little bit about our small groups, Bible studies that we're going to be kicking back off here. Um, so thank you, Father Jerome. So I just want to uh, take a couple seconds here. I promise that this is going to be the shortest, best post-homily talk ever. Emphasis on the best part. And that's because we're going to start by talking about what makes our parish good. What are things? Let me hear you. Any ideas? What's that? The people, yes. Anything else? More people coming, growing, yeah, evangelization, discipleship, he's on it. He knows. Anything else? One more thing. Anybody? Dave, you read. Come on, give me something. What makes a good parish? Yeah. <laughs> Priests and people coming together. And Father Jay and Father Jerome and Father Tom and Deacon Jim and the staff have started these Bible studies. And a lot of parishioners have started them as well. And this is, a, the, this is that call to the, the answer to the call of the Great Commission, to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations and baptize them, right? That's, we all know that line, hopefully. And the whole point is for us to come together, whether you sit on the right side of the church or not, on the left side. You know, you guys probably don't know anybody over there, maybe. But may, this is a way to learn our, who our neighbors are and be united as a parish. So I just invite you to... Think about joining one of these small groups. I was in one myself. It doesn't matter. On this Labor Day, we're thinking of, you know, maybe you're retired from, you know, 50 years of working in a company, or you're, like me, just coming out of college and working at a parish for a couple years. It doesn't matter if you're a youth minister. The group I was in, you know, there are cooks. There, <laughs> there was an accountant. You know, my wife is a teacher. It doesn't matter what your profession is. We're all called to be active in our lives for our families. We're also called to be active in our church. And a way to do that is to respond to this call and be involved in Living Room Church. Now, it's scary to think, I can't commit to eight weeks in a row, Rory. I can't do that. I don't care how nice Father Jerome is, you know. Eight weeks is tough. What we're going to do this fall is offer a once-a-month time for us to come together and just read Scripture together. And we'll break off into maybe some small groups while we do that. So, if, you know, when you go to Costco or Sam's Club or the, you know, the bulk store of your choice. You know, maybe you don't want to buy the bulk item. Maybe you want to sample it first. This is an opportunity to do that, too. So even if you're not sure about what you want to do with this, this is just an invitation to do that. I have a little sign-up sheet in the back. Come talk to me. Email me. My email's in the bulletin. Talk to Father Jay, Father Jerome when you see them, because this is an awesome opportunity to be united as a parish. And what better way to move into some of these diocesan changes than arm-in-arm -arm with each other, no matter where you sit. So thank you.